This is a box, but it's not any box. It's a black box. What can I do? Let's cut to the montage and find out. So here she is. Here is my portable live stream studio in a box. And now some of you may know me from bigger events, shooting on Constellations and doing all these live big events for big companies, but that's definitely not all that I do. I do a lot of smaller events as well. And that's why I purchased a ATEM Mini Pro when it came out, but also ATEM Mini Extreme. Now I was on a uh, live stream uh, job for my clients and I brought out my ATEM Mini Extreme, a laptop, a Stream Decks, all my bits and pieces that I use to normally do a live stream like that. And it just became an absolute mess of spaghetti, cables everywhere. It took me about three hours to get the thing set up and tested and everything ready before the stream. And we're just running out of time on the day to actually go live at the time we need to go. I bit the bullet and went, you know what? This needs to become a all-in-one solution. This needs to be put in a box, something that I can just grab and go, plug in a couple of cables and we're ready to go. And I think I've achieved that. So I'm currently in lockdown at the moment and I figured, well, I've got nothing better to do, so let's, let's do a project, let's put this together. So it's about two weeks ago, ago from now that I did that event um, where I just decided to do this and after jumping on Amazon and grabbing all these bits online, I finally have it all here. So I had five goals I wanted to achieve when I was uh, making this rack. First things first, I just wanted it to be simple. I just wanted it to be a simple solution. I can just grab and go and take it with me anywhere I need to go. It's all ready to go. Secondly, I just wanted a single connection to my computer so that I can not have all these things hanging off, all these dongles and bits and pieces. Uh, number three, cost effective. Like, it's, it has cost me a bit of money, but I still wanted to keep things on the cheaper side. Number four, I want a mixed mana support. So I wanted a console in there so that I can bring in remote guests, listen to them, and also um, they can hear what we're saying as well. What I have previously been doing is been trying to use virtual audio sound drivers on the computer and trying to do mixed minors and software, and it's just been a nightmare. Last of all, I wanted to have multiple use cases. I didn't want to have it just for one thing. Now, this is basically what I have normally set up for my YouTube channel. So any live stream or live recording that you, that you see is done in this style of setup. So I wanted to make sure it was good for that. But I also do bigger, bigger events. I wanted to be able to make sure I can bring in multiple cameras. I can bring in remote guests. I can mix them. I can put in my uh, overlay graphics. I can put in lower thirds. I can put, uh, play back videos. And I can do all that with pre preset buttons and do all the usual things that I would normally do. And I'd say I've achieved that. And in two weeks from thought to final build, I'm pretty stoked on how it's turned out. Now, let's dive deep into what is actually inside this puppy and what is running it. Now, obviously the heart of this box is the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. Great little switcher, lot of, uh, a lot of performance that you can get out of such a small thing and such a low price as well. So all based around the A10 Mini Extreme. I've got a Ultra Studio 4K Mini, which I'm using for my lower third graphics, which is linked into OBS or any other software required on the laptop over there. I have a, a StarTech Thunderbolt 3 hub. So part of my goal was to have a single cable solution. So I have a Thunderbolt 3 cable going, just sitting in the back there. So I just go bang Thunderbolt 3 into the side and that goes straight into the StarTech here. The StarTech will then split off uh, things like audio, ethernet, USB for CamLink, and also split out the Thunderbolt into the Ultra Studio as well. So single cable is running all of this, all this on, on Thunderbolt, which is great. I have two Raspberry Pis inside here, one of them for Companion, which is running all of our Stream Decks, and one running Playout B, which is a super cheap and simple Playout solution. So any video playbacks. So for example, I can fire my Countdown, which I would use normally for my uh, live stream 
and that's single button playing and faded and ready to go. Power is all managed inside the box. So I have a single cable solution, just plug in one PowerCon connector and I have multiple uh, voltages that I'm powering as well. So rather than having a million little uh, power adapters inside, I've got a five volt power supply, I've got a 12 volt power supply and 240 volts AC for all the 240 adapters. So all of the little adapters and converters and even Raspberry Pis and such, they're all running on the 12 volt and the five volt respectively. So all the power is managed inside the box. Now I also have HDMI splitters. So I have a four way HDMI splitter for our program out and I've got a two way for the multi view out. So inputs, outputs one and two and I can still change and look through everything on the buttons here on the multi-view as I so please. I also have two HDMI to SDI, sorry, SDI to HDMI converters to go from the Ultra Studio to get key and feel into the switcher itself. And I also have a HDMI to SDI so that I can get SDI out for whatever I need. So that can be for this monitor up here, it can be for venues that require SDI. I have options for that. What else is in this thing? And I've also got Apple TV. So I've got a little Apple TV sitting in there with audio D in bed happening. I've got Apple TV so I can do airplay from devices and just for general purposes. Won't use it that often, but it is handy just have that happening too. And audio wise, the heart of that is the Behringer XR16. So it is a quite a, a small and cost effective solution for audio, but for this, it's absolutely perfect. It's got 16 inputs, it's got USB record and playback. It's got four auxiliary outputs and two master outputs. So I've split that up to be master outputs going into the mic in on the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. I've got two outputs for my speakers in my office and that can be used for IFBs, for stereo. I've got another one for IFB and I've got another output going into the StarTech here. So that, that's an audio input for Zoom. So one prime example would be we're running a Zoom call and we want to have a camera set up and usual uh, set up here, but we don't want them to be able to hear themselves when they're, when they're talking and I want to be able to hear what they're saying. So I can send them just my microphone and any of the playback devices to them and they can, and I can hear them of what they're doing plus all my playbacks as well to make sure that everything's sounding okay. So I have full control over that. I'm running my volumes and such on the stream decks here. So I have full mute and unmute control over each thing. I can even do things like if I am in a countdown with a guest ready for a live stream, for example, I can mute my output to the world. So I can go, great, my mic and my guest mic are now muted to the world. So we can still have a conversation, uh, have a back, back channel conversation on the, on the Zoom call before we go live. And then all I have to do is just go bang, we're unmuted. We're now live and we've started the show. So all of these can be pre-programmed however I need and it's super handy. I'm also got a iPad here just in case I want to do some more fine adjustments of the X30, uh, sorry, X16 in here. But for the most part, I do most things on the computer or most things through Companion. So that's just another option there. I'm running a Video Assist 12G for my monitor up here. This is the video I had. Uh, this is a monitor I had already. So that can be my program feed. So while I'm sitting here doing a piece to camera, I've just got video going on here so I can see what's happening. I have a Paralynx Arrow, which is a HD um, video device. So I can just chuck this on top of my camera, for example, then I can walk around and get some wireless video. Now, if I need to do some shoots with Ursa Minis, which I do quite a lot of, I have about four of these micro converters, which will convert the SDI in and out ready so you can get camera control on the ATEM Mini Extreme itself. Super handy little boxes and also just for any other devices that may be SDI in or out. I have an eight port network switch on here, so which is running all the devices inside. Everything's on wired network. And I've got a little router in here as well. So this got a little GI net router, which has a little basic Wi-Fi built in. It also has WAN, inputs, so I've got a port on the back so I can go e internet in from the venue wherever I am. And I've got a USB port on that so that I can run a dongle internet device so that I can run things on either wired or wireless internet. And that's set for failover, so if one internet goes down, it'll fail over to the next one. And if I want to plug this just into my normal network, all the IPs are at the same range as my normal com 
uh, set up at home. So I just unplug the router and plug it into my router at home. Everything will continue on as per normal. I'm running two Fearworld 4K monitors on the front here. They just run HDMI in into the splitters in the back. So the way, the way that I'm able to get three Stream Decks working on this is I have a powered USB adapter here, just running 12 volts. So three lines of the powered USB adapter are going to the back. So all I have to do is go click, click, click for the three Stream Decks and they're good to go. I've got a button here ready. So if I start up and I need to scan the USB, if one of them's working, I can just scan the USB and they're all refresh ready to go. So that is a very brief overview of my new live stream studio in a box. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you hopefully got some ideas about how you can make this. Now, what did I learn in making this kit and what would I have done differently? Great question. Probably everything, but actually no, that's not entirely true. I'm, I'm very happy with how this turned out. It's a 6RU box. It is really tight in here. Now, I'll show you some overlay of as I was putting it together. Once everything's together, it's super tight, but I think size wise, I'm pretty happy with how, how big it is. Things like this front shelf is a little bit too short because I've got the Apple TV and Raspberry, Raspberry Pi sitting behind. So this had to come out a little bit to be able to fit the connections behind. And there's a few things that um, if I knew earlier, I probably would have done a little bit differently, but I was doing this on a rush and I was doing this in the budget as well. Also a few things with cables, some of the cables I already had laying around the house. If I was doing this for a client, I would have definitely put more planning and thought into this, of course, at the beginning, but also got every cable done specifically for this. Now, unfortunately, being HDMI, you can't really make custom length cables for that, which I really wish that was easy to do. All the SDI and all the Ethernet were custom cut and kept as nice as possible. Some of the audio I just used a out of off the shelf Amazon cables just because just wanted it to be easy. So there's a bit, there's a little bit of excess cable inside there, but for the most part, things are super, super clean. So I've tried to keep it that way. So in my original design, my plan was to have Thunderbolt running into the Ultra Studio and then USB out of that into a USB, uh, USB-C dongle to run video uh, data, sorry, HDMI data and USB. Now the USB out on these does not carry display link data, uh, sorry, display port data. And I only found that out once I actually started putting this together. So, which is the reason why I bought the StarTech. Now I bought the cheapest one, which had all the right ports on there, but I didn't realize that this only has 15 watts worth of power output on the Thunderbolt, which is nowhere near enough to charge the MacBook Pro. So unfortunately, I do have to run power into that as well, but I'm not entirely opposed to that just to have extra power and grunt going too. For the most part, if I only need one display output, I have one display coming out of this. But if I want to run two outputs, which I quite often do for my YouTube's, YouTube videos, I'll run a dongle on that and have an extra HDMI going into the back. So it's not a permanent thing for that second output on the computer, but it does do it for most of the time. Ultimately, I designed this for an M1 MacBook Air. I wanted to have a single cable solution and then plugged in. So I probably will still need power for that, but this whole thing will run on an M1 MacBook Air, which is super awesome. But right now I'm just running on my 15 inch MacBook Pro here. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I learned a lot make building this, so I hope you learned some as well if you're looking to build something like this very in a similar way. If you have any questions, chuck them in the, in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And if you have any thoughts about it, any, thing, any tweaks or anything you might think of, let me know. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button if you liked it. It helps me a lot to get these videos out for you guys. So I really hope you enjoyed. I might do a live stream coming up soon and answer some more Q and A questions about this rig and anything else. If you are looking for some advice on how to build something like this for yourself, potentially, I recently did a uh, build for a client recently, I did it over Zoom because he was in Sydney, but we aren't allowed to go anywhere at the moment because we're in lockdown currently. So we did the whole build in drawings and over Zoom. So if you require some help anywhere around the world, send me, a, send me an email, go to my website or drop in the comments below and I would uh, love to chat with you. So thank you so much for joining. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.